adding comments. So that's what we did in module one. As we added comments to the session, we saw our markups list uh, populate pretty rapidly with the different reviewers in the session that were adding comments. Um, now we're at the portion where we're going to be monitoring it and, and managing it, managing the reviewers. And the way to, you're going to do that is by mark, markup filtering. Uh, so depending on the number of SMEs or depending on which SME you are, you may only be looking to review, say, a handful of sheets in a larger submission, pages that can you know, go up into the hundreds of sheets. You may only need 12 of those for, for a certain SME, something like that. So you want to start filtering. The first one we're going to cover is filtering by page index. To activate filters in the markups list, and this is where I'm hoping everyone will, will hop in and start uh, uh, following along. To activate the filters, you'll click on the filter list button. It's got a uh, funnel looking symbol next to it. And that will turn yellow and add a new row at the top of all of your columns. So the fil first filter we're gonna do, when you open up a document, you'll see I have pages two, pages three, going all the way down throughout the full document. Uh, that can get sometimes kind of messy. So if I'm only looking to, to get to page one, sorry, I'll want to click on the gray row where it says all, and then click on the page where I want to consolidate my filter to. So now I've filtered to just page one, and I'm no longer seeing all the, the other page documents. And I can do that as I go along in a document. Uh, I'll switch my filter to two, take away one, and that will show me all of my uh, page one comments, or page two comments, sorry. So I mentioned it a little bit in module one, but text-enabled tools are the ones like Callout and Textbox that place the text of your comment directly with your markup. So those will appear to have um, comments written under the, the comments file, whereas things like rectangles, see an, a stray rectangle up here, do not have anything in the comment. This is fine because it can be filtered out uh, to take away the blanks. So again, we're gonna, we're gonna click at the top where it says all, and this time we're gonna go down and click custom. When you click custom, it'll open up your uh, custom filter. This is sort of like a, a rule sheet. So to filter by blank and take out any of those rectangle comments that don't have any text, you'll drop down under where it says choose a filtering rule. Click on that and go down to does not equal. And this is a really quick one because you don't have to enter anything in the choose a filtering value. All you want to do is find everything that is not blank. So to apply that filter, you will uh, click apply. And you'll see now that the uh, rectangles we were looking at before are gone, right? Another thing that's important to know is that when you are filtering markups, things that do not make it through the filter are gonna appear gray on your sheet. So you can see it here, the arrow and the cloud are now gray. And you can toggle your filters on and off by clicking on the filter list uh, column or the, the button there with the funnel. When you toggle it on and off, you'll see your, your red lines uh, go away and come back. And the good thing about this is you can toggle, but your settings are uh, still loaded. The settings that you set for your filter are still there. Um, and to get rid of those, maybe you want to see everything again, you'll select uh, at the top that gray column and go down to clear all. And you'll have to do that per column. Clearing all. So that's filtering by blank. Uh, so yeah, to revert back to that original view, you'll uh, clear all along these rows at the top. 
The next thing uh, we'll discuss is filtering by subject. I had mentioned that um, all your text enabled comments should be placed in tools that um, tools like call out or text box that have the text. So it comes in this comment um, column here. And we can also filter by that subject um, in case anything slips through the cracks. So right now I'm going to go to uh, page three and I'm going to set my filter to just see page three. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. Um, I'll show you what it looks like I'm setting my blank filter again. That's what we've already been through. So sometimes things, tools like pen or highlight and measurement will insert, you know, whatever the value of that measurement is into the comments. So you can filter by subject to, to get around that if you have a lot of measurements in there. And uh, let me just clear that page one. To filter by that, you'll click all and then go down to custom again. And the two key words I've, I've mentioned are text and call out. So under filtering rule, you can drop down to contains. And then you'll type in call out. Add another rule so that you get both call outs and text boxes. You'll click or. And then you can go down again, drop down to contains, and now enter text. And then click apply. Uh, so you'll see the way that's set it up. Using the contains option when filtering allows you to cast a bit of a wider net so that it's not just things that perfectly match uh, text. You have things like cloud callout, uh, text box clear, callout clear. Uh, so that's that's a really good way to just get down to your text comments. And when you finally get turned loose and you're putting lines all over these plans, it's going to be a really useful a filter to use to get any um, random line work out of this common area where you're going to be resolving. And I'll just toggle my filter again uh, to show that it's been turning gray. That's that's where that measurement was that I was trying to filter out. And it'll turn gray. For a project manager, it might be really useful for you to filter by author or by SME. Uh, the same goes for these columns. You just click on all. And this is great because individually I can pick names and that'll set up my filter. So I'll see the list of names of everyone who left comments. Maybe I want to see all of Lauren Coe's comments. And when you do this on page one, let's say you're really just targeting one author. When you click on the comment, in the markups tab, it automatically takes you right to that comment. Uh, that'll save a tremendous amount of time. Uh, similar to the author column, let's say you have multiple authors that are part of the same SME. You can filter by SME as well. So in this case, uh, I want to see the comments from uh, Safety Bicycle and Pedestrian Group. Yeah, the last thing is there is the uh, filtering by SME, but now we've, we've walked through uh, just about all the useful filters. I mentioned the real-time collabor collaboration benefits a couple times, but we haven't really seen any of that except from pretty much um, setting your status up here, right? Setting it to reviewing or setting it to finished, which notify, or, um, creates a record for your project manager to monitor. Um, so I filtered out to get to, to bicycle pedestrian here. I'm actually going to want to go to uh, page five. All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm filtering to just uh, the bike ped comment. When I toggle my filter off, I'll see all the other comments that are there. So I see this comment from bike ped, but Maybe I'm traffics, traffic or geometrics, and I have some stuff to either add at the same location, or I might have something I, I disagree with. Uh, so 
um, let's say I placed a, a duplicate or conflicting comment here. And I see uh, uh, James has also placed a conflicting or, or duplicate comment. I can work through uh, this comment with my bike pet SME right here in the session. I mean, ideally, I'll, I'll call them over to my desk, show them what I'm thinking, and confirm with them. But as we talked about uh, comment integrity, this comment that James placed I don't have the option to adjust it in any type of way. You know, it maintains its integrity. So what I'll have to do is work with him to resolve it. And at the same time here, uh, he's going to be asking me to remove my comment. So when you have a comment that you want to alert an attendee about, you will right click on that comment and go all the way down to alert attendee. you hover on that, you can then go to choose. And I'll have my list here of everyone that is in the session that I can alert about this, a certain comment. Uh, but right now, I'm, I'm, I want to alert James. And maybe James and, and Tremaine are, are on their end uh, alerting me. So I've sent that alert. And now I'm going to go down to this record portion. And I want to put in a corresponding chat. So click on your filter here and uncheck markup, and you can uncheck document. You can even uncheck attendee so that you're just showing the chat and the alert. And in addition to an alert, I'm also going to, going to send a chat. Uh, to James, um, you know, I'll say James, uh, waiting for you uh, to delete that comment over on page five. On James's end, let's say he's out of a session, and now that I'm waiting, you know, I want my project manager to know, I'm, I'm, hey, I'm waiting to have a conversation with James. I'm done with everything else, but I, I just got to talk to him about this before I finish set my status to waiting there. Let's say I leave a studio session. I now have a notification on my, on my list of studio sessions. It's that, that red bubble, that number one. And that is gonna be my alert. That is, that is how people will see uh, that they've received an alert. Again, phone call will take care of this, but let's say they're on vacation, unavailable. You wanna create a record of it, at least demonstrating why you're waiting. To clear out that alert, they'll have to go to the notifications tab in your studio tab. And here I see that alert. When I click on that alert and I saw the chat, you know, I'm seeing James's uh, conflicting comment. I can't delete his, but I can delete mine. So he's, he's requested me uh, to delete my comment and I'm the only one who can do that. So I'll do that. That's, that's really the, uh, the common integrity and, and some of that notification stuff. Re uh, again, just another note that using this filter at the bottom of the record is going to be uh, really crucial because if you leave the markups up, um, you know, it, can, it can turn pretty crazy pretty quick and any of your chats are, are just going to be lost in it. Uh, so filtering, that's, that's a lot of what today is about.